Right, Jamie, you're, uh, you're back officially a full, full-time employee of Chatham Town uh, for the first time since you <coughs> retired from playing. Uh, how pleased are you? And, and can you just tell me a bit about your role at the club? Oh, very pleased. Uh, it's great great to be back. Um, obviously, great to be full-time because um, obviously I was part-time uh, with the 16s and uh, still managing the academy. Um, my role now is to kind of oversee the academy uh, with Russ as well. So I work with the 18s as well and uh, look after the under eights all the way up to the under 16s from the academy. So uh, a lot of work, but it's uh, very rewarding. Very yeah. rewarding, yeah. There's been a lot of changes with the academy since John Murphy started overseeing it and you've got the academy status that you you needed a certain amount of full-time staff, didn't you, to qualify for that status. So you can just explain how that works. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, there is a lot of criteria to meet. Um, we're not there, that, not there yet. We're going to get audited um, towards the end of the season, or maybe after September, possibly. Um, so there is criteria to meet. Um, one of them is the amount of full-time staff. Um, I think it's a minimum of five full-time staff. So, so we're there at the moment. But like I said, you know, there's a lot of other things that we need to do and that we need to um, try and improve. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, that's what they're doing. As a, the ECCP system, they're trying to improve clubs, trying to uh, get better players, younger players. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're making good, steady progress on that, yeah. Yeah, you, you're a full-time footballer, well, apprentice at West Ham, full-time at, yeah. at Bournemouth, and then when you're at Cheltenham, you're, you're pretty much a full-time player even when they're in non-league, weren't you? So you've now had that spell out of football, working at the Gloucestershire Royal Hospital. What was that like? Was that a valuable experience at, very good, yeah. Very good life experience, and that's what that's what I wanted. Um, football, love, always love football. Outside of football, you know, I like I did like medicine, uh, so it was you know it was important for me to try and do something that, that I liked. Um, and like I said, you know, fantastic experience, uh, fantastic people. Uh, I learned so much. You know, you know your life experiences. Uh, you know, you can never stop improving that and uh, gaining knowledge from that. Um, and it's helped me, in, it's, it's, and it will help me in my role now. Um, but yeah, it was it was very good. Yeah, it's, it's great. The fans love the fact that Mark Yates is manager, Neil Howarth is assistant. Um, obviously, Steve Book's back as goalkeeper coach. Russell's yeah. running the youth, youth set up. You're heavily involved now with him. And what's it like working with all those old teammates? It, 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 yeah, it's great. It's great. It's just like it's just like the old days, to be honest. Um, it, it took me a couple of weeks to settle in, you know, to get used to things, you know, how how people want things done, etc. But um, you, you know, we're getting we're getting there now, and you know, it's great to be around them again. Um, obviously played four or five years with them so yeah. um, it's good to be around them um, and you know we're there to help out as well to try and improve uh, the whole club because the club is going in, you know, in a great direction yeah. at this moment in time so um, you know it's good that we're all, all in it together Yeah I think you were at the club before any of them just before, and then Steve Book arrived Russ Milton arrived yeah. and then a bit later Mark and Neil arrived and, and obviously you outlasted them all as well didn't you so you probably got more experience at the club of what the club is all about but every every one of those characters knows what the club is all about don't they, so. they yeah they do they do and um, you know and every single one of them brought something different to the club uh, and, and, and and you know we've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of winners here and people have been successful at the club as well um, so they know what the club's about um, they know what they want to do they you know they they got the best interest in the club so to speak yeah um, and you know so have I so has Russell uh, and like I said you know we're all in the in it together to try and improve and uh, make the club a better place. Yeah, I was at the, uh, the Wimbledon FA Cup tie away and saw you and Russ doing your pre-match talk at the hotel. And how how, how valuable do you think it is that you two have been been there, done it at the club, when these young players you know look up to you? Yeah, um, I, I think it's not just being being at the club. I, I think it's the uh, the upbringing that Russell and myself have had as well. Because obviously Russell was at Arsenal, I was at West Ham. You know, two good footballing schools, so to speak. Um, and we, we, you know, we've got knowledge, we've got experience. The players look up to it. You know, sometimes we tell them stories, um, yeah. and you know, we just want to try and improve them. But they do look up to us, and they do want to learn and uh, improve as footballers and as people as well. Yeah, I've um, I can't remember a time when there's been this much talk about the, the potential of the current youth team with Joe Hanks already playing for the first team. There's a couple of other lads in the second year, but also a lot of first years in there that have got another year to develop and. Are you quite excited by this bunch? Yeah, very excited, very excited. Um, I think we took 11, 11 from the 16s last year, so that shows you know the quality that we've got. Um, and we've still got players in the academy who are good as well, so we've got, you know, it's, it's good times in the academy at the moment. Um, but the, the issue is it's, it's a fine line, isn't it? It's a fine line between youth football and professional football. 
So what what myself and uh, and Russ need to do is to try and uh, bridge that gap, you know, try and make them. I think it's a mental thing as well. Sometimes you know, mentally, you know, kids go and train with the first team. You know, how do they cope? Physically, yeah, but mentally, you know, how do they cope? So it's um, it's it's a lot of things that we need to try and get across to the kids, so they can try and cross that bridge. Yeah, do you remember when you made that transition? <coughs> what what was it like for you when you went from being a trainee or apprentice, as it would have been in those days, to being a pro? Um, yeah, I can remember it. Yeah, very good. I just got on with it, just got in, worked hard, worked even harder, uh, got on with it, and, you know, and, and at the end of the day I was training with the likes of Clive Allen, Alvin Martin, uh, you know, Ian Bishop, you know, fantastic pros, um, and Julian Dix as well, fantastic pros, and um, I wasn't in awe of them, because I had to get on, you know, and, and try and improve myself, and uh, just try and get in with them, because yeah. um, that's where I wanted to be at the end of the day, so, it yeah. was, you know, it was, I was probably too young, <laughs> and naive to be nervous about anything. Yeah. Do you think Joe Hanks having that substitute appearance against Exeter has that given all the other lads a sort of a, a lift and say, you know, if we if we impress here, we've got a chance of, of definitely, definitely. It, you know, it's, it's, it's great for uh, what the, what the gaffer's done. You know, obviously uh, brought Hanksy in the, into the fold, um, <clears throat> and what it will do is give a boost to the other boys as well because they'll, they'll look at that and think, right, well, if I can get somebody near where what Hanks, what Joe's doing, you know, maybe I'll, I'll have a chance as well. Uh, and it's good. For, it's good. It's great for us as well because we can we can say, look, Joe's there. You know, this is what you have to do. Yeah. So yeah. you know, all round, it's good. Yeah, you took eleven from the under 16s last season. <coughs> what, when I know you you're around the sort of time you're making the decision now, aren't you, on this year's under 16s, whether they're going to get a uh, two-year scholarship? So what sort of things are you looking for in those lads? That that. You, that... Um, <coughs> it, it depends. It, it depends what the, what the kids bring to us already, um, and then what we see in them. I mean, you know. If I was to go into detail, you, you, you can uh, pace, you know, from your from your wide players, from your strikers, you know, first touch is so important in football. If I'm going into detail, um, you know, vision, awareness, just just things like that. Um, can they physically cope? Are they mentally strong enough to to come in and do four times training a week and play a game on a Saturday, plus do your college as well? So it's it's a, it's a lot of things that we need to look at. Um, but like I said, you know, we, I think there's five at the moment who who have been offered scholarships. Right. Um, but you know, there could be a, a few more added to that as well. But uh, loads of things, you know, they got to bring something to the table where we think we look at them and think that we can improve that day to day training uh, and we can give them a chance yeah. to try and either not just get into the first first team fold, but a chance in, in football in general yep. you know try and give them a life that we've had because yep. um, you know it's, it's, it is a fantastic life yeah and it's I mean what are your realistic aims with the progression to the professional uh, squad because it's so difficult to make that step up like you said it's been a while <coughs> since Cheltenham had one but obviously if you have a real special young lad he, he could get snapped up like the, the Doofus brothers did by Everton so if you've got to just try and keep the best ones you can and, and, and put them forward to Mark Yates when the time comes it's, it's it, it's a bit of both, to be honest. Um, you know, we've got we've got big bigger clubs looking at our players in the academy now. So if they come in with offers to go and buy them, you know, we work the pros and cons. You know, by the time they get to 15, 16, they are they are unlikely to go to other clubs, although the Doofus brothers did. Yeah. But they're less unlikely to. Um, but what we try and do is try and push these boys on, um, try and recognise, you know, what they need to try and get there. Yeah, and I can't remember, I mean, Shane Duff came through the youth set-up, didn't he? Uh, Will Puddy got a pro, Ethan yeah. Moore got a pro, but didn't work out for him, but do you think the club are due one now? Like, Joe Hanks seems to be the one leading the way at the moment, but do you think they're due a, a homegrown player? Yeah, 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 there's another one, there's de- obviously David Bird as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's that time again, um, but what you know, like I said, we've got other players in the youth team set up as well. We can hopefully we can try and push on. I think I think what we we all look to do um, either this season or definitely next season is try and get some of these players out on loan so they can get a bit of experience, um, get a bit a bit more knowledge of the game and what it's about. Yeah. Because um, that will stand in good stead for you know if they are in the first team fold. Yeah, you you had the cut run. Great effort against Tottenham, just yeah. got edged out, and then they, I think they thrashed West Ham in the next round, didn't they? So it shows, yeah. so it shows how, how good they were. But well, it does, yeah. It, it shows, it shows. I think it shows the quality that we we've got. 
um, you know, as, as individuals, you know, great. Um, team, they need to be a little bit more consistent. But it shows, you know, you don't, you know, go to West Ham and beat, beat them 5-2, you know, because you know, they'll be a good setup. up um, And the boys will hopefully have gained confidence from that. Yeah. Um, and they can take it on. Yeah. When, when you were playing uh, at Cheltenham, did you, did you think Mark Yates... You know, he's got the potential to go on to be a manager. Did you see that in him? Or were you surprised when he decided to go down that route? No, not surprised at all, no, because uh, he, he was captain um, for a while as well. So, and he, you know, he was always one to to um, say he's a bit interchangeable, you know, where I, I was quiet, and myself was quiet, and, you know, and Russ was quiet as well. But he was always to voice his uh, opinions, and, um, you know, he's done, he's done excellent, he's done really well. Um, and like I said, you know, he's taking the club forward again. Yeah. Um, and it just goes to show with, his, with the signings that we've had recently um, that the, the club is going places basically because you know they're, they're attracting these these quality players. Yeah. Does he does he ask you for your opinion on things like when he was looking at signing Billy Jones because obviously he had Luke Garbutt last season, still had Danny Andrew. Did yeah. and you know a thing or two about playing left back? Does he does he ask you for your opinion on things like that? No, no, <laughs> no. He, you know, he's got his own. He's got his own opinion. He's got, you know, he's got Neil there. He's got, he's got Wes there, who's, who's played he's obviously Bookie as well. Um, so you know, he's got a lot of experience around him. Um, you know, I just, as a youth department, we just try and stick to try and what we we're doing. Yeah. Um, but no, no, no advice. Right. You know, any excuse to have a chat about the old days when you played? I think for over four hundred and fifty games, Southern League, Conference, League Two, League One. What, what's, what? When you look back now, all those games, what? There's obvious highlights of winning stuff, but what what sort of stands out for you? And anything in particular memories? Um, I think always that night against Yeovil. <laughs> That's yeah, that always stands out. Yeah, you because know. um, a fantastic game, obviously. Uh, you know, great rewards at the end of it. Um, and the West Brom one as well. You know, yeah, it's so close. Um, you almost scored in that one, didn't you? Yeah, right? yeah. Personally, I you know I had a head to clear off the line, um, and uh, obviously Wembley. Yeah, and you got the Millennium Stadium as well, so you know it's great memories, um, and there, there are probably more that I've forgotten, um, funnier ones as well <laughs> yeah. that I can't divulge into. So <laughs> I mean, the, the Oval game, we've spoken about it before, but you you definitely scored one. You gave away a penalty, didn't you? Yeah. And then you obviously, uh, debatably, in some scored people's opinion, winner. scored the winner. So, uh, <laughs> but what what an incredible night! And that that game will always. <laughs> be remembered as one of the most important nights in the club's history whatever happens in the future now isn't well it? that's it yeah and that's it you know we worked so hard um, and uh, for it to end in that way as well you know the emotions were up and down you know one minute we scored next minute we give away a penalty uh, and then we score again and you know it's, that's what it's all about and, that, and, that, and that's that's the memories of football and that's what we try to, to to give to these these boys, you know, so you need to work really hard to try and to try and get that, to try and reach that goal. Yeah. Because you can have some, you know, wonderful, wonderful memories. Yeah, I know you, you only just started this job full time, so don't want to get ahead of myself. But do you want to manage? Do you want to go into coaching? Do you want to work the senior players, or are you just happy working with young players? Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy working with, with younger players. You know, I get a great buzz, buzz from it, um, and I and I look at, you know, people like Tony Carr at West Ham, and I, and I wonder myself, you know, why isn't he? Gone into to manage at a higher level, or, you know, first team or reserves, etc. Um, and I can see now why he's he's been there for so long because he's brought all these boys through, and he must get you know a great buzz from it. Um, and and, that, and that's what I that's what I get. You know, I love going in every day, uh, seeing the boys, having a bit of a joke with them, but obviously trying to develop them and trying to give them a, a good life, basically. Yeah. yeah, and in terms of since since the Tottenham game. You've been concentrating on the league, obviously, the under 18s. How's it actually going in the league this season? Um, well, obviously, due to the weather, um, they've only had one game that was last week when they beat Yeovil 5 1 yeah. away. So, you know, that, like I said, hopefully the confidence from the Tottenham game, confidence from Tottenham beating West Ham 5 2, you know, will give them uh, confidence to go and try and get a bit of consistency. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a great start against Yeovil, so uh, hopefully they'll. they'll Think about you know how they want to play and you know try to try to move on and get that consistency. Yeah, they're a good bunch. This lot. This yeah, season. yeah, yeah. Great bunch. Great bunch of lads. Uh, work hard. Um, you know, a lot of them love. They love football, uh, and that's the main thing. You know, you, if you've got a desire, you want to go and 
train three, four hours a day um, to try and reach your goals, and you know, that's what we're going to get into them as well. Yeah, is it March? You, you make decisions on the, the second years this year whether they got a chance to go in pro. Or yeah, yeah, it should be around March, um, but um, you know we'll just have to wait and see on that uh, whether it, they got an extended period, but probably by March or around March. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Jamie, that is absolutely brilliant. Cheers for that. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.